everyone and welcome back to Atman Unlimited. We have some new audio equipment. This is courtesy of a viewer. We're probably going to be doing some work uh, with this viewer. They sent me an email uh, requesting a little bit of help and then they said, by the way, I've got a nice uh, Sennheiser lavalier uh, microphone that I'm not using. Would you be interested in it? And I said, yes, of course. Uh, so they sent it along. So now we have a nice uh, lavalier uh, microphone. It's a uh, wireless. So I can walk around the shop now and we can do videos where I'm off camera and still get uh, really good audio. So we're going to try this out and uh, see how the audio quality on this microphone is. So leave some comments below. Let me know what you think. Uh, thank you very much for sending me this. Uh, it is greatly appreciated. Um, they didn't respond back if they wanted to be acknowledged in the video or not. So we'll, we'll remain anonymous, anonymous for now. And then uh, if they send me an email back, we'll acknowledge them. Uh, in the future, but thank you very much for the microphone. So this week's video, what we're going to be doing is actually replacing the full set of controller cards that we reviewed a couple of weeks ago into the machine. So there's some steps that you need to take before you remove your old boards. Then we'll show how to remove and install the new set of boards. And then I'll show you the steps that are required uh, once you have those new boards in. So let's get to it and we'll uh, turn on the machine and show you what you have to do before you take the old boards out. We're at the machine. Now we need to record a whole bunch of data out of the machine before we take the old boards out. Sorry about the glare, doing the best I can. So the first set of parameters that we need to record are your set P values. So you want to type in set P, enter, and now you're going to get a bunch of pages of parameters. Now what these parameters do is it tells the controller what type, what type of machine it is hooked up to. So it's going to tell how many axes you have, um, the travel of your axes, how many tools in your tool changer, your spindle, rigid tapping. There's all kinds of stuff in here that you're going to have to record. Now the easiest way to do this is I just took a picture of the screen. Now make sure you get all the pages. So on my machine, I have three pages uh, worth of stuff. So that's page one, that's page two, and then that's page three. So make sure you record all of your pages and you want to write down all these values or take a picture of the screen because you're gonna need to re-enter all of this stuff uh, once you put the new cards in. So that's the first set of data that you need to run or need to record. So now we'll go back to the main screen. The second set of data that you need to record is your backlash comp. So we want to type in BL, enter, and then these are the backlash numbers for your machine. You want to write these down or take a picture of the screen as well, because these are going to have to be re-entered in uh, once you replace your controller cards. Now in my case, I'm also going to be replacing my Axis control cards because they're a newer rev card with newer firmware. The surveys for your ball screws are stored on the Axi control cards. So because I'm replacing my Axis cards, I need to record the survey values. If you do not record your survey values, you're going to lose them. You're going to have to pay somebody to come in and do a laser cal on your machine to resurvey the ball screws. So to get into the survey section, you type in SV, enter, and then it's going to ask you which axis do you want to work with. We're going to start with X, so we'll type in X. Now it gives you a couple of uh, options here. You can review and change, you can read the survey out of the axis cards, you can write a new survey, you can write the survey to the axes cards. That's if you make changes and you need to store it, you need to perform the write. You can change the zero offset or you can change the gain. So these are all the functions that you have under the surveys. Um, if you make changes in this section, make sure you understand what you're doing. It will greatly affect the accuracy of your machine. So let's review the survey data on this machine. So this is the X screw. And the first point that it wants is minus nine inches. So the points on the numbers on the left are the positions of the machine. So you start at 10 inches, minus 10 inches, and you zero your uh, measurement device out. You would zero your laser if you're using a laser. 
and then that would be zero, so that's why that point's not shown. Then you move the machine to minus nine, and you read what your laser says. So on this machine, I'm two tenths of an inch short when I go from 10 inches to minus nine inches. When I go from minus nine inches to minus eight inches, I lose another tenth, and then I lose another tenth, and then I gain a tenth. So you can see that there's a nonlinearity in this ball screw, and this axis survey allows you to compensate for that nonlinearity. So there's going to be one value for every inch of ball screw travel. So you need to record all these numbers down. So that's my X survey. Now when you're done recording these, you can press manual to go back to the screen. We're going to press manual one more time, and then it will let you select a different axis. So now we're going to do what? We're going to do Y, excuse me. We're going to review Y. Now Y, I only have 16 inches of Y travel. So Y starts at minus seven, same deal. So you can see the Y survey. Now I'm hoping to do a video maybe in the future on how to do a survey on a machine. Uh, I've got to work with uh, Brian on that one and see if we, he can uh, come in and bring the laser in. Uh, so once you record Y, now you come back and then you can do Z. Now here's the kicker. If you notice in my machine, it's all zero. What I have learned and found out is that on Fidel, they did not survey the Z screw. They only survey X and Y at the factory. So almost every Fidel out there, unless it has been surveyed by a third party company after the machine has been shipped, will have a zeroed out Z survey. So in my case, when I replaced my Z ball screw, I really didn't lose anything because it wasn't surveyed to begin with. Um, so I, I'm, I'm also hoping to survey Z as well, but for now Z is zeroed out. So then we'll do uh, manual to exit and manual. Now, anytime you go into this survey screen, be aware when you exit from this screen, it's going to reboot the machine. So if I press, when I press manual one more time, we're going to see the machine restart. Okay, so now it's restarting. You're going to have to re-cold start the machine. Uh, they do that so that the survey values will reload out of the axes cards into the machine memory and then the machine will be ready to use them. So set P values, backlash values, survey values. We're now ready to replace the cards. Let's go to the, we'll turn the machine off. We'll go to the back of the machine and we'll pull the old cards out, put the new cards in. So the procedure for each card is the same. We remove the card gently put it in a stack bag for transport, and repeat. So we just pulled out the processor board. That was the video card. That was the computer interface board that's coming out now. Some of them are in there pretty good. The next are X, Y, and Z axis controllers. And then the next one's the A access controller card. I have a fourth access. And then this one's the spindle card. See so how it says rigid tapping? That's how you know if your firmware is capable of rigid tapping. And then remember, on the Dash 4 boards, the spindle controller has a couple of more chips on it. After the spindle card is the clock board and the mill interface board. So then we did a whole bunch of cleaning and you can see that uh, we were able to clean the cabinet up quite a bit without the cards being in there. And then we reinstalled the video card and the computer interface cards first. And then I went on and put the uh, main processor board in. Then the uh, bridge board for the extra bus that they have across the front. Then X axes. And remember, the XYZ axes boards have to go into very specific slots. Um, it's all in the Fidel manuals on where all these boards need to go and which slot numbers. So there's uh, XYZ axis controller cards. We're hooking back up the resolvers. Then the A axis controller card. My little helper decided to make a cameo. Then the spindle controller card. Then the clock board. And last, the mill interface board. 
Then we put the retention bar back on that was not installed when I got the machine. Now it's time to fire it up and see if the new boards come alive. And we got flashing lights. It's a good sign. The new boards are installed, and this is what you get when you first power up the machine uh, when you're doing a memory upgrade. So we need to reinitialize the memory. So we need to enter in the diagnostics. And we type in G0 space 3000. Press the space bar. And we select option 5 for zero memory. We want to zero all memory, yes. Yes, we will lose our programs. That's it. We can select option two to reboot the machine. Okay, so we'll power it off and power it back on. Okay, so we got our memory reinitialized. Now we'll have to program in all of our settings again. All right, we showed you how to reinitialize the memory in the machine after the new cards were put into the machine. Now that the memory is reinitialized, now we're going to retype in all the values. So again, we're going to do set P. Go in, enter in all the values into the new cards that were in the old cards. We're going to do backlash. We're going to re-enter in our backlash parameters that were in the old cards into the new cards. And then we're going to do our SV for our axis surveys. And now we're going to enter in all that survey data that we had in the old cards back into the new cards. So there we have it. We got our new boards swapped in. Now the firmware that the machine is operating on for the main firmware is the exact same version that I was previously operating on. Uh, so there's no changes there. However, the firmware that was on the new servo control cards is many revs newer. And I'm noticing some important differences. Uh, mainly it looks like the backlash comp is implemented and works a lot better in this newer firmware. Um, so I'm gonna try to see if we can arrange another ball bar video and then see if the new cards affect the ball bar at all. Um, I'm also going to retune the servo drives and rebalance the drives. So I'm going to make a video on how to balance the drives um, on these machines. All these machines use analog commands, so it's important to balance the drives. Uh, so just in closing, we needed to record all of our existing parameters, uh, including the backlash comp settings and your ball screw surveys. Don't forget about your ball screw surveys. Then we swapped out the new cards. We fired the machine back up. We had to initialize the memory because we uh, changed out the cards and upgraded the memory. And then last, we needed to re-enter in all of the data uh, that we recorded from the old cards back into the new cards. So coming up, we've got a couple of cool videos coming up. Um, been working really hard. We've been making parts for customers. You know, I've been hammered at my day job, so time has been scarce, but I have all the parts to install the Renishaw probing system in the machine. I have all the schematics done. It's all ready to go in the machine. Um, so I'm hoping to get that done this weekend, the weekend that this video is released, so this weekend. Uh, and then once that's done, I'll do a full video on the installation of it 
And then there's gonna be videos to follow on the Renishaw macros and how to calibrate the probe and, and all that stuff. And then uh, on top of that, we're gonna still continue our electrical series. We only did one video on that so far. Um, you know, we kind of got sidetracked on the Renishaw stuff and the cards and everything as it comes along. Um, so we'll be doing videos on the electronics and control algorithms and stuff that go on inside this machine. So stay tuned and uh, thank you for watching. We'll see you on the next video.